Hi, uh, it's Muho, and it's been a while that I posted something in English on YouTube. Uh, today I want to answer a question about the Zazen posture. And you will find more information about what I have to do in links that I will post below this. Uh, these will refer to articles that I wrote a couple of years ago about the posture of Zazen. Um, first, um, that's something that uh, most people will tell you, is if you want uh, precise instruction about how to sit, the best thing is to uh, look for a teacher, sit with a group, rather than uh, teach yourself by reading books or uh, watching videos on YouTube. Although there's lots of uh, information on YouTube as well and I uh, also so will uh, post a link to a very um, easy to understand and also entertaining uh, video on Zazen that you can find on YouTube. But now to the question uh, from a guy from Denmark uh, who sent me a video of his own posture and he's asking uh, two questions. Where to place the feet? High on the thighs or low on the thighs? Um, well, first of all, um, you don't have to sit in full lotus, you don't have to sit in half lotus. If you can't get the feet up, um, it's okay if you sit, for example, in the Burmese uh, posture. Or you can sit in a kind of kneeling position and uh, use this cushion to support your buttocks. Um, for some people this is a comfortable way to sit. Um, but it gives your posture more stability if you can lift the feet up. So if it's possible for you to lift one foot up, you can sit like this, so-called half lotus. Uh, and if you can, uh, take some flexibility. But over the years maybe, you get flexible enough to sit uh, with both feet up. Uh, don't force it, you can hurt yourself. But if you can sit like this, uh, the answer to the question is uh, put the feet high up rather than sitting like this. In the long run, this might seem to be the easier posture, but in the long run actually this hurts more because all the pressure is on the uh, ankles. Especially the, the foot that is here, kind of forced in here. In the long run this, this will hurt me in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, will hurt me a lot. While if I manage to get them here, the ankles have the support of the thigh. So in the long run this is better and it also gives you more stability. So the feet, if you can, fold them. If you can't, don't force it. But if you can, then put them up here. Um, sometimes you see pictures of yogis who have the feet kind of sticking out like this. You don't, you don't have to force this. So, so they don't, sh they shouldn't stick out. But if the Toes reach just to the edge of the thighs, that would be perfect, if you can do that. And they lie close to your trunk. Then the uh, second question is how to place the hands in either of the above mentioned ways of placing the feet. Since that affects what you can do and how you can do it. The usual instruction of in the crease of hips is actually not physically possible as far as I can see unless you adopt a low feet placement on the thighs. So basically if a teacher tells you that you should place the uh, hands in the crease of the hips uh, probably they suppose that you sit in a Burmese way anyway. So if you have the feet here, then your, uh, your, your hands would come here. Um, while as this person is uh, kind of pointing out, if one of your feet or even both feet come up here, um, it's impossible to force the, the hands in here. Um, so what uh, often people say, um, is that the traditional way to fold the legs is first place the right foot on top of the left thigh, then you place the left foot on top of the right thigh, and then you place the right hand on top of the left foot. And actually, and now it has disappeared, but around 10 years ago when YouTube just started, there was a video from a guy who received this instruction in Nagoya, in a temple in Nagoya, 
probably it was his first experience with Sazen. He was so excited about it uh, that he posted this video on YouTube of him demonstrating it in his home. And he said, right hand on the left foot, left hand on the right foot, or sitting like this on YouTube. Um, that's of course not the way it's meant. So uh, the left, right hand goes on the left foot, but the kind of, how would you call this of the hand? The kind of, the wrist, the wrist rests on the heel of the foot like this. And then the left hand would come on top of that. And actually what I'm doing is, people usually they switch uh, feet, although the traditional way is that you first have the right foot on top of the left thigh and then the left foot should always be on top. But usually meditators, uh, when they meditate for a long time, they switch the feet and I also do that. And what I started doing a couple of years ago is I also started to switch hands. And the reason I do it, if I have the right hand on the left heel and then the left hand on this, they, they, it doesn't cause much of a problem, but kind of the, the hands, they all rest on this point here. While if I do it the other way around, especially if I have kind of a little support here, and I first put the left hand here, then it fills this cavity, and then I put the right hand here, kind of feels more natural or easier. And if I sit the other way around, if I sit like this, in this case I would first maybe put a towel, or right now I'm using a sock, you put the sock, then here I put the right hand and on top of this I put the left hand and I mean there's discussion about where the thumbs should be exactly be right now they're touching my navel but I mean they could also be a little bit away from the body it's actually more difficult to than one would, would imagine to kind of keep them straight like this that they if you get tired they go like this or if you fight too much they go like this Ideally, they should be straight. Ideally, also, that's, that's more difficult than you imagine is to have the, the hands straight. Uh, before watching the video, probably can't even tell if they're straight right now. I often realize after I watch uh, these videos on YouTube that I uploaded how, how bad my gas show is. Uh, so, so, when you kind of force too much, then probably uh, there's too much force on, on my right side. So, I kind of my gas show goes like this and then when I become aware of that then consciously now I pressure more on the left. So that the same thing happens during the Zen. That's why, well, it's good to have a living teacher or maybe sometimes to, to check yourself in the mirror, check yourself, take a video, look at the video, how it looks. Um, also the guy who was asking the question, he says, um, I seem to lean a bit to one side and left shoulder should be more pulled down as far as I can see. Mm, well, I wouldn't say that we should pull it down. It's, it's usually uh, not that we should pull down one side more, but rather, well, you need to relax. Um, so you shouldn't become too nervous about sitting in the perfect right posture because you will never sit in the perfect posture. Um, uh, so don't force it too much, rather relax in the posture, but when you notice that one side is kind of hanging down too much, uh, you correct it. But I mean, uh, don't be too fuzzy about it. It's something that uh, I realized also in the, in the case of the video of the guy who's asking me that question. Um, Sawaki Roshi said that we should pull back the chin. Because we have the tendency to, in, in everyday life, to, to sit like this in front of a computer. The tendency is to, to sit like this, while in Zen you, you, the, the shoulders are back, you pull down the, back the chin, but then you start to sit like this, kind of now I'm, I'm exaggerating, but, but there's this conscious pulling of the chin, which is already too much. Even in the photographs that exist of Sawaki Roshi, and it's a very good posture. The, uh, a lot of photographs, most of them were taken around the age when he was 60. But you can sense there's a certain kind of 
conscious effort in there and he's, he's aware of the camera. He's aware that somebody's taking a picture and he's making this just a little extra effort. Um, only when, with some pictures that were taken of Sawaki Roshi when he was over 80, you see that he's probably not even aware of anybody taking a picture and it's much more natural. Although the posture is maybe not as good as it was when he was 60. Um, anyway, so don't um, expect that your posture will be perfect. Uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with trying to improve uh, the posture. It's, import, uh, it's important. Like the, the person who sends me this through email, he's kind of saying that he was asking others um, and the feedback that uh, he got was in reply I got asked a lot of questions about why I felt it necessary to sit in Kekka Fusa and stories about how people couldn't do that uh, which in the usual internet manner evolved into pointless circular metaphysical nonsense and so forth so I mean I don't think this is nonsense to, to be worried about how to sit but, I mean, you can take it too far also, so you should be a little bit uh, careful that you don't take it too far, you don't become perfectionist. Also, uh, don't hurt yourself. Um, when you sit long, for a long time, you will always be in pain. So, I mean, you have to accept that. You will be in pain. Um, but uh, it's important to, to kind of know the line. Um, like, like for example after a sitting you do kin hin for 10 minutes 15 minutes you walk if you're still in pain after 10 minutes of kin hin uh, then you're hurting yourself uh, you're doing uh, damage to your body so um, you should switch whenever you feel pain um, you should sit with the pain but 